Professor, do you see mathematics as something we invent as a human beings or like, for example, language or something we discover like the laws of physics? I think it's both. It's both. Yes, because again, coming from my biblical presuppositions, human beings have been dignified by being made in the image of God. And God is creator. That's the fundamental idea. So he's made us capable of certain kinds of creation. We're made in his image. He's a rational creator. And at a much lesser level, of course, he uh, has made us rational creators. And in my field of mathematics, pure mathematics, we invent new ideas all the time. But then <laughs> one comes to ask, do these new ideas actually, can they tell us anything more about nature? In other words, are they applicable? Some are, some are not. Those that are begin to make you think, well, God is a divine mathematician. He knew it all before. And of course, there's a wonderful story about a very famous pure mathematician called Paul Erdős, <laughs> and he was a Hungarian mathematician, dead now, but a very friendly man who traveled the world, and he would collaborate with hundreds of different mathematicians, and he would constantly say, it's in the book, it's in the book, in <laughs> some kind of platonic uh, notion where all these theorems that we think that we discover or make up are already there. I'm not sure I completely subscribe to that because I, I do think there is an element of genuine creativity that, that we can perform. And anyway, uh, even if we settled that question, I don't know how we would settle it, actually, the, the question you've asked. And so I'm happy to travel on two tracks uh, in this whole issue and keep my mind open. Okay, okay. You've mentioned now the, the platonic nature mentioned by this mathematician, the Hungarian mathematician, which the name I, is escaping me. Uh, Erdős, Pál Erdős. Pál Erdős, okay. Uh, actually, Sir Roger Penrose, the Nobel Prize winner, argues that mathematics exists independently in a platonic realm as, realm as well, beyond space and time. And you know, other possibilities that we can think of for the essence of mathematics can be, you know, maybe a mental essence or a physical essence or even something entirely fictional. Based on all these possibilities, where do you stand, Professor? Which, which one do you see is more likely or, or maybe mo the most compelling? Well, I'm sympathetic to a lot of what Penrose writes. But what interests me is mathematics gives us information. And mathematical descriptions are not physical. They're actually um, non-physical. And that, to my mind, is a strong indicator that any materialistic interpretation of the universe must be totally inadequate, indeed false, because the very existence of mathematics that describes the universe um, gives the lie to that. Uh, another way of looking that, at that is to comment on the fact that we live, as people say, in an information age. And information is not physical, although some people have tried very hard to claim that it is, arguing that we usually get information on some kind of physical substrate, uh, just as I'm receiving information from you on a screen which involves uh, pixels making up a picture. So, so there's a physical dimension to it. But the information is not the pixels. It's carried on them, but it's not there. It is a non-physical entity. And some mathematicians, and I go with them, uh, will argue that the existence of information as a fundamental quantity not reducible to mathematics and physics is one of the greatest arguments against the materialistic interpretation of the universe that we have, and a very powerful one.